sitting on out here today, one of the interests that we were talking about was you have the history of this wreck of the Rome. Mm -hmm. Now when I first dove on this with you, I, I'll, I'll never forget that day as long as I live. That was uh, the story itself as being an entertainer, the story itself was so gripping. And then to actually go down and dive through the wreck and to see these different things that you showed us. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could go ahead and touch on that for us? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Well, it all starts on a day just like this. October 29th, 1867, this beautiful ship, the RMS Rome, sailed through the Virgin Islands on their way to Charlotte Amalia, but stopped at Peter Island to uh, escape an unfortunate incident of uh, yellow fever that had, out, had an outbreak in St. Thomas. So she was originally not supposed to even stop over in this area. And as her captain, Captain Woolley, and the sister ship that was following the Conway, captained by Captain Hammock, um, came through here, they decided to make a plan to swing into Roadtown instead and get out of this what appeared to be a northerly storm that was coming across. Being on the north side of Peter Island, they wanted to find some shelter. So, heave anchor and head over into Roadtown, and uh, just as things started getting a little bit nasty, they lost their large anchor. Conway started making their way over a little earlier, but the Rhone just couldn't get that anchor up. And uh, as they made a big arc to escape between the Salt Island Passage between Peter Island and Salt Island, they tried to escape through that. That storm kicked back around the other side and pushed them right back up in, inside. And unfortunately, Black Rock Point was a little closer to them than they thought. And as it washed up and a wave picked them up, set them right on top of Black Rock Point, nice crease, went right into the side of the, the ship, put a little hole in the iron, right in between the beams, and funneled this cold Caribbean water down into the engine rooms where they had a whole system of boilers set up along the, the middle of the, of the ship. And chain reaction after those engines had been stoked for hours on end trying to escape this storm, that cold water hit those boilers and a massive steam explosion. Immediately rips the ship into two pieces. Stern sinks immediately just off of Black Rock Point and the bow breaks itself off, flips over on its starboard side, and drifts just down the slope of the sand to about 75 feet. And there she rested for nearly 100 years before really anyone started diving on her and salvaging a lot of the major stuff that was inside the wrecks, hard hat diving. And um, as the stern sat in complete form for quite a while, um, the BVI government decided it was probably best to blow the stern, the stern um, mast that was still out of the water, the aft mast was still sticking out blow it out of the water when they did so, rather than just knocking the, the mast over, as a navigational hazard they felt, they just filleted it right in half. Now you can see all the beautiful things that were inside of it. Huge propeller, huge um, prop shaft, one of the neat artifacts that are still laying on that stern section. Cabin's, cabin number 26 is porthole, and the 2-6 stamped in the pretty brass is laying just there in about 35 feet of water. And as you swim by, you see the 2-6 etched in the, in the brass, give it a little rub for good luck. And uh, still pretty pretty popular today. A lot of wonderful life down there too. I Lots think. of great life. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm not I've been to wreck diving, or I really like wrecks so much, so much in the reefs. But it's really the best of both worlds. Being down there, these 140 years, you know, coming soon, or just over 140 years actually last year. Um, it's just. It's just amazing the amount of coral and life that's grown on it. It's really stuck to it for such a long time. We highly recommend anybody that's coming down here to go diving. My theory is this. Only half of the beauty of these islands is above the surface. Dive the eye. We'll show you the rest. Yeah, come. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Daddy.
while drifting in your mind you find song you see and hear seems to say Leave behind your weary mind Take the path of your nature Walk away good friend Trish here we've known each other for a lot of years down here as most of the people on this DVD but Trish has got a unique hobby slash passion I'm the uh, reef check coordinator for the British Virgin Islands and reef check is an international global coral reef monitoring network and it started in 1997 and the BBI was the first country, I believe, in the Caribbean to take it on. One of the questions I wanted to ask you this morning was the the impact that uh, that snorkelers and uh, you know divers and whatnot may have on these reefs and stuff like that. Wherever wherever you get a large number of people, like you're putting large numbers of snorkelers and divers on the reef, um, you, you just shouldn't touch anything. You shouldn't take anything. Lie nice and horizontal on the surface, and let nature just show itself in front of you don't stand on anything even if you think it's rock because it may be colonizing something if you need to adjust your snorkel gear go on your back swim out on your back until you're in deep water so that when you go vertical you're not flapping around and stirring up the sediment or, or knocking the corals with your fins and then adjust yourself you're much you're a much safer snorkeler and you're going to do less damage if you're inexperienced snorkeling in deep water than in shallow water two big things worldwide about um, coral reef decline is sediment from poor on-island uh, construction, roads, building sites and everything. Even at the top of a mountain here in the BBI, the sediment eventually makes its way down into the sea. And when we see this dark colored water after heavy rain, that is outside global climate change, the other big factor that's killing the reefs worldwide. And, but I think you and I had talked about maybe we have a collective message that we could give to the camera. I think, I think so, so, yeah. All right, let's give it a try here. Let's get that close right. Yeah. All right, right on the count of three. One, two, three. Don't, Don't be a snorkel dork. Boats are back in town. 